I'm Rebecca Shinsky, the director of content for Book Riot. I'm back with another book mail, bonanza, unboxing, whatever you want to call it. I'm still going through the massive, massive piles of book mail from my 10 day trip last month. There is so much. I'm kind of dying because I don't know what's in all these envelopes and they've just been stacked up in my office. I've been waiting so patiently to open them here with you. So let's get down to it. America's First Daughter, a novel by Stephanie Dre and Laura Kamoy. Kamoy? Uh, from her earliest days, Patsy Jefferson knows that though her father loves his family dearly, his devotion to his country runs deeper still. As Thomas Jefferson's oldest daughter, she becomes his helpmate in the wake of her mother's death, traveling with him when he becomes America's minister to France. And it is in Paris, at the glittering court and among the first tumultuous days of the French Revolution, that she learns of her father's liaison with Sally Hemings, a slave girl her own age. Oh, interesting. So historical fiction uh, about and inspired by Thomas Jefferson comes out March 1st. So you got a while to wait if America's first daughter is on your list. Ooh, the great and calamitous tale of Johann Toms, how one man accidentally started World War I. Liberty, uh, Liberty Hardy from Book Riot also, who hosts the All the Books podcast with me every week, was just talking about this. Uh, this is about a promising young student at the University of Sarajevo, uh, Johann Tom. He is poised for greatness. He's in love with a beautiful woman. He can outwit chess masters, but he cannot drive a car in reverse. And as with so much in his life, this seemingly insignificant detail proves to be much more than it appears. On the morning of June 28th, 1914, Johann takes his place as the chauffeur to Franz Ferdinand and the royal entourage, and with one wrong turn, he forever alters the course of history. This is a true story. It's basically about the guy who started World War I. Oh, and uh, this one's out now. It came out October 13th. City of Clowns by Daniel Allerson and Sheila Alvarado. Moving, menacing, and brilliantly vivid. It looks like it might be illustrated. Oh, it is. It looks it's an illustrated novel with stuff in it. This is from Riverhead. It's coming out November 3rd. The story City of Clowns first appeared in English in Allerson's collection War by Candlelight, which was a finalist for the Penn Hemingway Award in 2006. So it's not a brand new story. Uh, it's very affecting. It was then translated into Spanish and now in collaboration with renowned Peruvian artist uh, Sheila Alvarado. She has gorgeously rendered the narrative's perfect mix of emotion, pathos, and action back in English and in a new thrilling graphic form. These are really beautiful black and white drawings. Cool, so that's the City of Shadows. <laughs> Sorry, no, that's the City of Clowns. Can't hide any of the mistakes on live tape, friends. A Backpack of Bear and Eight Crates of Vodka. This is a memoir by Lev Golinkin. Okay, so uh, in the twilight of the Cold War, nine-year-old Lev Golinkin and his family crossed the Soviet border with only 10 suitcases, $600, and the vague promise of help waiting in Vienna. Years later, Lev, now an American adult, sets out to retrace his family's long trek and locate and say thank you to the strangers who fought for his freedom. That's really cool. And it came out on October 13th, so if you are into history and you want to read a memoir set in the late 80s about a pretty uh, unique experience, you can get this one now. Okay. Oh, ooh, this looks really interesting. A Madness So Discreet by Mindy McGinnis. Came out on October 6th, so it's out already. Murder, madness, and mystery combine in this gothic historical thriller about a girl who must confront dark family secrets to reclaim her life. Grace May knows madness. She keeps it locked away along with her voice, trapped inside a brilliant mind that cannot forget horrific family secrets. Those secrets, along with the bulge in her belly, land her in a Boston insane asylum. And then it goes from there. This is ages 14 and up, so it's young adult. Dark historical thriller. That looks good for fall. Ooh, what a pretty cover. This is The Iceberg, a memoir by Marion Coots. In 2008, the chief art critic for The Independent was diagnosed with a brain tumor. The Iceberg is his wife's story. Uh, this is a fierce, exquisite memoir of the two years leading up to his death. Emails to friends of the path Tom's disease was taking and many seemingly matter-of-fact statements convey the intolerable. Mary and Tom and their two-year-old son, Ev, lovingly weather the storm together. 
In short bursts of breathtakingly textured prose, the iceberg becomes a singular work of art. Wow, so heavy, but this sounds like it could be really good. It comes out in February. It's from Grove Atlantic. I might give the iceberg a shot. That's, that looks like it could be a really powerful read. That's all we have time for, but there are more books to go and there are still some stacked in my office so I'll be back next week with yet another book mail preview. I hope you're having fun with these. I'm really having a good time. Uh, send me your thoughts, questions, comments, whatever down below and don't forget to subscribe so you can stay up to date with all of our bookish goodness. I'll see you next time.